going to turn now to criminal justice. Mayor Buttigieg, under your leadership as mayor, a black resident in South Bend, Indiana, was four times more likely to be arrested for marijuana possession than a white resident. Now, that racial disparity is higher than the rest of the state. In fact, it's higher than the rest of the nation. And that disparity increased in South Bend after you took office. When talking about the problem on national terms, you've called it, quote, evidence of systemic racism. But you were mayor for eight years, so weren't you, in effect, the head of the system? And how do you explain that increase in black arrests under your leadership? Well, the reality is, on my watch, drug arrests in South Bend were lower than the national average, and specifically to marijuana, lower than in Indiana. But there is no question that systemic racism has penetrated to every level of our system, and my city was not immune. I took a lot of heat for discussing systemic racism with my own police department. But we've got to confront the fact that there is no escaping how this is part of all of our policies. Earlier, we were talking about opioids. And thankfully, America has come to a better understanding about the fact that opioid addiction is best understood as a medical problem. But there were a lot of people, including a lot of African-American activists in my community, who have made the very good point. It's great that everybody's so enlightened about drug policy now when it comes to opioids, but where were you when it came to marijuana? Where were you when it came to the crack epidemic in the 1990s? That is one of the reasons why I am calling for us as a country to take up those reforms that end incarceration as a response to possession and make sure that we legalize marijuana and when we do it, do it retroactively retroactively with expungements to correct the harm done in so many cases of incarceration, disproportionately of black and brown Americans, where the incarceration did far more harm right. than Let the offense it was intended to Right. Want to go back to the original question, though. How do you explain the increase in black arrests in South Bend under your leadership for marijuana possession? And again, the overall rate was lower. No, there was the an increase. Rate. The year before you were in office, it was lower. Once you became in office in 2012, that number went up. In 2018, the last number year that we have a record for, that number was still up. Yeah. And one of the strategies that our community adopted was to target when there were cases where there was gun violence and gang violence, which was uh, slaughtering so many in our community burying teenagers, disproportionately black teenagers. We adopted a strategy that said that drug enforcement would be targeted in cases where there was a connection to the most violent group or gang connected to a murder. These things are all connected, but that's the point. So are all of the things that need to change in order for us to prevent violence and remove the effects of systemic racism, not just from criminal justice, but from our economy, from health, from housing, and from our democracy itself. Senator Warren, is that a substantial answer from Mayor Buttigieg? No. own up to the facts. And it's important to own up to the facts about how race has totally permeated our criminal justice system. You know, for the exact same crime, study after study now shows that African Americans are more likely than whites to be detained, to be arrested, to be taken to trial, to be wrongfully convicted, and to receive harsher sentences. We need to rework our criminal justice system from the very front end on what we make illegal all the way through the system and how we help people come back into the community. But we cannot just say that criminal justice is the only time we want to talk about race specifically. We need to start having race conscious laws. Housing, for example. I have a great housing plan to build more housing in America, but understand it was the policy of the United States of America to discriminate against African Americans and people, uh, any other people of color for buying homes until 1965. You can't just repeal that and say, okay, now everything is even. It's not. We need race conscious laws in education, in employment, in entrepreneurship to make this country a country of opportunity for everyone, no matter the color of their skin. Uh, uh, Elizabeth, with, with respect. Uh. 
with, with respect, you can't regulate away racism with a whole patchwork of laws that are race specific. What we have to do is heed the writings of Martin Luther King, whose birthday we just celebrated. He said that capitalism forgets that life is social. And what he was championing was a guaranteed minimum income for all Americans of $1,000 a month or more that would end up reshaping our economy in communities of color, make it so that black net worth is not 10% of white net worth in this country, which is the most important number of them all. We can't regulate that away through any other means except by putting money directly into the hands of African Americans and Latinos and people of color to allow businesses to actually flourish and grow in those communities. The only way that will happen is if black and Latino consumers have buying power, and that is where we have to move as a country. Senator Sanders, then Mr. Steyer. Andrew, no, let me say this. I disagree with you, Andrew. I am the person on this stage who will say openly, I'm for reparations. Something wrong happened. I am for reparations to African Americans in this country, and anyone who thinks that racism is a thing of the past and not an ongoing problem is not dealing with reality. In fact, three days ago, one of the leaders of Joe Biden's South Carolina uh, campaign made racist remarks about someone associated with our campaign. And the Legislative Black Caucus went out en masse to stand up for that man and for our campaign. Joe, I'm asking you to come with me and the Legislative Black Caucus and disavow Dick Harputlian and what he had to say it was wrong. And I'm asking you to join us, be on the right side. I'm asking you to join me and join in the support I have from the overwhelming number of the members of that Black Caucus. I have more support in South Carolina in the Black Caucus and the black community than anybody else. Double what you have or anybody else But wait a second, wait a second. Quite Bernie. Well, that is quite right. Let's not argue about polls. That is quite right. This no, isn't no, about, no. Bernie, this isn't about polls. I'm not, I'm not this is not about polls. I'm not talking about polls. About polls. We have nine members of the Black Caucus in South Carolina supporting us. But more importantly, much of what Elizabeth said is absolutely correct. We have a racist society from top to bottom impacting health care, housing, criminal justice, education, you name it. And clearly this is an issue that must be dealt with. But in terms of criminal justice, what we have got to do is understand the system is broken, is racist. We invest in our young people in jobs and education, not more jails and incarceration. We end the war on drugs, which has disproportionately impacted African Americans, Latinos, and Native Americans. We end private prisons and detention centers in America. Bernie, I appreciate we, what you're saying. And, excuse me, we also, most people don't know this, tonight in America, 200,000 people are in jail without having been convicted of anything. That's right. 200,000 people, because they can't afford the 500 bucks for bail they need to get out of jail. That is outrageous. We're gonna end cash bail. Okay, let me say this. I've worked, Bernie. I've worked to end cash bail in California and it's gone. I've worked to end private prisons in California and they're gone. I'm somebody who's, our family, my wife and I started a bank specifically to support businesses owned by women, black people and Latinos because they couldn't get financing anywhere else. But I, Joe, I want to answer. Really, I think you should come over and disavow the statements that this man made because, uh, that were uh, openly racist that we're wrong and the legislative black caucus is against, I'm asking you to join us and do the right thing. I've already spoken to Dick Carpoolian and uh, he in fact is, uh, was, uh, is, I believe, uh, sorry for what he said. But here's the deal, folks. Look, we gotta stop taking the black community for granted. That's the starting place. Every one of the things we talked about here, for example, in South Carolina, Jim Clyburn, he has a program, 10, 15, 30. We should be investing our money in those communities that haven't gotten help for a long time and give most of that help to those communities. Make it a priority. We should make sure that we have in the, no one going to jail for a, a, a drug offense. They go directly mandatory prison. I mean, excuse me, mandatory treatment, not prison. And we fund it. And we fund it, and three days doesn't get it. It takes at least 60 to 90 days 
to make any progress. We have to pay for that, just like instead of building new prisons, we build new rehabilitation centers. We have to make sure that we have a window at the Treasury Department that allows entrepreneurs who are black and brown and minorities to be able to get loans to be able to start businesses. You know, if you own a house, you, I know you do know, if you own a house in an all-black neighborhood, same exact house in an all-white neighborhood, exact same shape, the house value in the black neighborhood would be valued as worth less, making it difficult for you to accumulate wealth, as, as my friend at the end of the line here says. So here's the deal. We have to do much, much more. That's what got me involved in politics in the first place, redlining to stop it. I got involved through the civil rights movement. I became a public defender. That's why I got involved. There's so many things we have to do across the board, and in education, at-risk schools. We should triple the funding we have for at-risk schools to provide for four, five, and six years old to be able to go, three, four, and five years old to go to school, not daycare. Increase the salaries of teachers. Encourage more blacks to get into teaching, especially black men, because the studies show when there's a black man in a community, in a school, it increases prospects significantly, and so on. There's a lot we can do. I've laid it all out as how to do it. Go to JoeBiden.com. You'll see the whole deal, including criminal justice reform. Thank you, Mr. Vice President.